Hello guys, this is Teresa Love with Kingdom Initiatives and Power to Truth. And I just wanted to come before you um, just for a brief moment to um, just reiterate the importance of allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you. In this time, it's very imperative that we do this, even if we're tired and um. And I, I'm like, amen, Jesus, you know, I totally get it. But um, it is just so important the uh, Lord is stressing that we allow the Spirit to lead us in this hour. Um, this happened on April 9th, and um, it was actually about 1 a.m. in the morning, and I had a busy day. I was, you know, really tired and everything, and so I got in bed. But right when I got in bed in my spirit, I felt that I supposed to anoint myself and I supposed to take communion. And I kind of looked, I knew exactly where the oil was and of course the communion cup, but I was just like, Oh, I'm so tired. But again, it, it, it the Holy spirit impressed upon my spirit to do it no matter what. So I did. And as soon as I got back in bed to lay down, I see this vision of this big wolf and these people walking beside it. And it's like they were looking, you know, trying to find me, but they couldn't because I was sensitive to the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus covered me and the anointing, you know, the, the oil represents the anointing, the healing, you know, peace. And um, I was just like, wow, Lord, this is so just so awesome. And the scripture that the Lord gave me, you know, was the scripture from um, where Nahum, you know, he was a um, a leader in the army and in everything or, you know, um, and, you know, just very high up general per se. And um he heard about Elijah and the healing and and everything. So he actually got a letter from the king to travel. And then he brought all these gifts and everything that he wanted to give, um, you know, for his healing and everything. But how many of us know that healing is a gift from Jesus? It's a gift from Jesus. So you don't have to pay for your healing. Somebody catch that. You do not have to pay anybody for your healing. But um, when he got there... Um, the king, like that, he went to you know, he tore his clothes. He was like, "Who am I to heal someone of leprosy or whatever?" But Elijah, the prophet, who has a direct contact with the Lord, knew he would be coming. So when they sent him to you know Elijah's home, Elijah didn't even come out. He sent his servant to say, "Go wash yourself at the at, in the Jordan," you know, seven times. But Nahum, you know thinking about his status and who he was, he almost missed his healing because he got angry. You know, it's like, how dare he not come out and meet me face to face? But then the wisdom of a servant girl, that's why we have to be very careful who God uses to bring the word because we don't know who that person is that will have a word that will protect you, protect your family, bring healing, bring life. The Lord is using the humble and the meek. So it was a servant girl who said um, to her master, Nahum, if, you know, if it was a big, and I'm just paraphrasing, it was a, you know, something big for you to do. If you had to go cut a giant's head off or whatever, you know, would you have done it? You know, all they're saying is just go wash in the brook Jordan, you know, in the river Jordan. And of course, you know, of course, he's like the Jordan was, you know, dirty or whatever to him. You know, why not wash in the, you know, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, you know, the big Nile or whatever. However, he went and he actually did what the Elijah had told him to do finally in his healing was instantaneously. But then he wanted to give gifts and everything. But Elijah said, no, I will not take anything because he understood that was a gift from God. That was the glory of God. A lot of cases in the Bible when things happen when the healing happens it's all glory to God when they defeated people some of the plunder was sacred to the Lord the Lord was like you can't take it for yourself it it it, it is it is glory it's a sacrifice unto the Lord and that's something that a lot of us have to realize right amen so in this case as we 
So yeah, so um, how many of us know that we can have people that surround us that can actually work beside us and, and say that they're learning from us, but truly don't understand where you are in the spirit, don't understand God's ways, even though they, they've like, again, they're supposed to be gleaning from you, but they truly don't understand God's ways. So that's why it's so important, again, to know who labors amongst you. So Elijah sent, you know, Nahum on his way and said, no, I will, as the Lord live, I will not take anything, you know, because again, he had knowledge that no one knew at the moment about taking something when again, the gift of healing and protection is for God's glory. But he had a servant, um, uh, um, I think it's uh, Gehaza, Gehazu or something like that, who took it upon himself to run after the blessings that belong to the Lord. He ran after, and when Nahum saw him coming, he lied and was like there were two people that were coming that needed clothes, and, and if he could just give them two silver coins or something like that, I'm paraphrasing. And, of course, Nahum said yes. And then the thing happened is when he got back to Elijah, Elijah said, where have you been? And he lied, oh, I haven't been anywhere, Master. He hid the stuff. You know, so many times in the Bible, you hide the things thinking that God doesn't see and God knows all. And Elijah said, did you not know my spirit went with you? Because I poured into you. But then also I have a connection, a vertical connection with the living God. He talks to me. He's my master. And he said... It reminds me of Ananias and, and Sapphira when they lied to, um, was it Paul, Peter? Um, I think it was Peter. I'm not sure. You guys look it up. Where they lied about, you know, selling everything and giving everything, which they didn't have to lie, but they did. They lied to the Holy Spirit. And that's something that's happening in this age. We're not going to be able to lie and get away and ask God's forgiveness and everything. God is saying, no, you're coming up to, you got to come up to a higher standard. You have to come up to a higher standard of righteousness and holiness in this hour because we cannot, um, God is not playing, number one. God is not playing. So Gehazi basically, when he took those gifts, those clothes and everything, in the spirit, he connected himself with that leprosy, that leprosy that Nahum had. And Elijah said, all the days of your life, through your family, will have leprosy. Yeah. So we have to be very, very careful and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. This is not fear. This is training. This is training. And I was so grateful because warfare has been like off the chain. So I was so grateful that, you know, because again, God is testing us and training us for the next level, for where we are. We have things to do. So I hope this, you know, go back and read, just put in, um, you know, your Bible app about Nahum and the Jordan. It's a great read. <laughs> it really is. And, um, and just, you know, sit with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit just, you know, enlightens you, you know. Oh, yeah, just like the, the, the um, blind man at the, um, um, when Jesus healed the blind man. Thank you. It's John 9, 7. It says, go, he told him, and wash yourself at the pool of Shalom. And the man went and washed himself, and he came out seeing. So our being sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this hour could be your healing. It could be your deliverance. It could be whatever we need. So again, be sensitive. Um, God is moving and God loves you. I love you too. Again, this is Kingdom Initiatives with Teresa Love and Power to Truth. And I hope this message blessed you and gave and has given um, some keys to the kingdom right in this hour that you can use. Amen. God bless you.